All right, so on this part, <clears throat> I'm gonna just get you um, pretty much a brief explanation of what we're gonna do. We're just gonna solder this uh, QSA connector onto this um, XLX2. Uh, normally what I like to do is just kind of get this XLX2 prep by tending these wires and then getting this connector pretty much trimmed up. Uh, what we're gonna do is pretty much get these connectors cut up. Um, I've already showed in like another video on what we're gonna do, um, and that is pretty much destroy this connector. So what you wanna do is break it down the middle. Then once we get that broken down the middle, We're just gonna pretty much hold that connector. And tear this apart. Already kind of gone through on this process in another video. So, this one's just going to be pretty quick. I'll link the video in the description on the other process. But pretty much, it's just same in um, both aspects. We're just going to get this plastic cut up. Be careful on that. <clears throat> plastic cut on that side and we're going to get that plastic cut on that side. Next what we're going to do is take our connector kind of break that part off by prying on it a little bit. Same thing on that one. So you do kind of got to make sure you cut through that connector. This one's not quite cut through. There we go. Once you get that cut through, you want to just kind of take some pliers, some needle noses, um, and work it out. So we got one connector out. Get the next connector out. Get that off to the side. And then next we're gonna um, pretty much heat this bullet up. And soldering is pretty hazardous, so make sure you have a well ventilated area, fans, uh, mask, um, so you don't get sick. <clears throat> And this part, it is going to be a little bit easier to kind of use a helping hand. So what I'm going to do is get that bullet nice and hot.
just want to hold that connector in place till that solder dries. Uh, what you want to use is a 60-40. It's almost like instant cure um, for soldering. Next we'll add a little flux. And flux is almost like a cleaner, but a lubricant, so it's gonna get that solder to wick up the wires. So we got that one pretty much done. Uh, next what we're gonna do is do the same exact thing. <clears throat> Get this bullet nice and hot. Um, this one I've already gone ahead and pretend. Um, it's just pretty much getting that flux to sink into that wire so it can suck in that solder. The solder that I'm using has a flux core, but you still wanna use flux from time to time. Pretty much what I'm trying to do is just mimic hot potting. Um, with this connector, it is big enough that I don't really need a hot pot. Just heat it up, get that solder to wick. And then once you press that wire in, it's going to pretty much be straightforward on sinking that wire into the solder. It's going to wick its way up the wire and get a solid connection. Give it one more shot.
and it's a solid connection just be careful because it is a little bit hot you don't want to burn your hands on that next we'll take some heat shrink I'm going to cut it about two inches thick. And then one trick that I do is I take the connector, plug it into the male connector, Now that that's solder up. Take a cordless heat gun, put on the heat mode. Also, when you're dealing with these 1.5, make sure you have them tight. battery strap out the wing so our XLX tube can go down with no issue. So that's pretty much together. Um, let me get a QS8 battery and I can show you how that connector will work.
So if this was a connector and say this battery is in our car, it would be positive on positive. Then we'll have our negative on negative. Turn on our switch. And we got a good test. This is supposed to beep like this um, because we don't have the motor in, but we also have to calibrate this ESC. Also have to program this Fatuba receiver. So the next step is pretty much going through getting our batteries, um, getting our motor connected, and we're pretty much good. If you don't if you don't use this power wire, I would say get rid of it, but in my case I'm gonna use this on off switch. Just kind of makes it a little bit easier. You could solder this um, to get it out the way. But I like to have the switch on there just for like programming. Um, you do have to connect your ESC to the computer, then you gotta program it. Uh, once you go to program it, once you turn it on and off to calibrate as well. So at this moment, I'm gonna keep this on. If you wanted to run a jumper from the positive to the negative, solder these wires, twist them together, um, and call it good. So when I am working on these, I like to just put these in there and get them out the way. Once I get them out the way, um, they're kind of good. We'll get this wire out the way as well. And then I'll show you on getting these batteries wired up, soldered up, and go from there. So would this battery fit just since I have it on hand? Um, no. Your batteries are going to have to be a certain size. So they're saying that your maximum battery dimension is going to be 150 millimeters. Um, width is one fit or 51 millimeters and then your height 70 millimeters. So this is not going to work. Um, so just keep that in mind if you have in batteries. Make sure your batteries are going to fit into the stock trays and the stock location. In this case, I'm not going to uh, take these trays out. I'm gonna just try to work with these trays. See, if I adjust that back a little bit, would this still work? No, it's still a little bit having tight fit. Would these hard cases work? these hard cases fit so just keep that in mind whatever batteries you're going to run you want to make sure that they're in the correct dimensions so next I'll show you how to get these hard cases soldered up and then we'll go from there